Hello fifth graders, welcome to lesson 6.8, Patterns with Fractions. Please pause to write the lesson number and title in your notebook. Today's lesson objective is to identify, describe, and create numeric patterns with fractions. Please pause to write the lesson objective in your notebook. Here we go, fifth graders, lesson 6.8. Let's begin by reading the Unlock the Problem. Mr. Patrick wants to develop a new chili recipe for his restaurant. Each batch he makes uses a different amount of chili powder. The first batch uses three and one half ounces. The second batch uses four and five six ounces. And the third batch uses six and one six ounces. And the fourth batch uses seven and one half ounces. If this pattern continues, how much chili powder will he use in the sixth batch? All right, now that we know our questions and we can see here we've got a pattern, that we know that we need to be able to find a rule and then continue finding the terms. So let's go ahead and look at what we already have. We have three and one half was the first batch. Four and five six is the second batch. Six and one half is the third batch and seven and one half is the fourth batch. So we know that our numbers are getting bigger, but remember whenever we need to find the change in terms, we need to subtract. So let's go ahead and use six and one sixth minus four and five six. I picked the middle two just so I know that I had two that were next to each other. 1 6 minus 5 6 I can't do, so I have to borrow. So this becomes 5, and then I move over 6 6. But remember, I already had 1, so I, now I have 7 6. 7 minus 5 is 2 6, and then 5 minus 4 is 1. So my change is 1 and 2 6. And they actually showed us that there, but I wanted to show you how we got it. So if we look at three and one half, and then we add one and two six, then we get four and five six. Next we add one and two six, continuing the pattern, and we get six and one six. Then we add one and two six. Next we get seven and one half. So each time our rule is having us add one and two six cups of chili powder. Step two says write a rule that describes the pattern. Well we know that our rule is going to get bigger so we know that since, since four and five six is bigger than three and one half, the pattern is increasing. So now that we know what we're describing, our rule is that it adds one and two, six every time. Now you have step three right underneath, I do not. So make sure that all of this is written down before you continue to the next slide. All right, when we left off on the last slide, we had found all the way up to the fourth batch, but we need to find the sixth batch. So we need to use our rule to fill in our next terms in the pattern. So if our rule was that we add one and two six, then we need to go from our last number, which was seven and one half, and we need to add one and two six. And you can see here that I'm jumping back and forth between halves and six. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator before we move on. So seven and one half could be described as seven and three, six. So seven and three, six plus one 
and 2, 6. So 3 plus 2 is 5, 6, and 7 plus 1 is 8. So our next term is 8 and 5, 6. Now let's go ahead and add one more time to fill in our next term. So we have 8 and 5, 6, plus 1 and 2, 6. 5 plus 2 is 7, 6, and 8 plus 1 is 9. And this gets us our last term, but unfortunately this term is in an improper fraction because 7 is bigger than 6. So we need to change this to 7. 6 goes into 7 one time, so that means I have one more whole number. So that means that I'm going to have 10 and 1 left over 6. So my last term is 10 and 1, 6. So he's going to use 10 and 1, 6 ounces of chili powder for his sixth batch. Great job, fifth graders. All right, let's go ahead and continue with the next example. It says, find the unknown terms in the sequence. So let's look at our terms. We have 1 and 3 fourths, and then 1 and 9 sixteenths, and then 1 and 3 eighths, and then 1 and 3 sixteenths. Then we have some holes, then we have 7 sixteenths, and then 1 fourth. Well, this is kind of tricky to tell what's happening in our pattern because there's so many different denominators. So I know that my number is getting smaller because I started with 1 and 3 fourths and I ended with 1 fourth, but let's go ahead and write these all as a common denominator so that we know what's happening to our pattern. So if I have 1 and 3 fourths, let's make them all into 16s because 4 can go into 16 and 8 can go into 16 and the 16ths are already in 16 so we won't have to change those. So if I'm trying to change 3 fourths into 16 so 1 and 3 fourths changing into 16 means that I need to multiply by 4 on the top and the bottom. So 3 times 4 is 12. So that's going to give me 1 and 12 16 My next one's already in 16 so that one is 1 and 9 16 then I have 1 and 3 eighths. So in order to change an 8 into a 16, I need to multiply by 2, which means I need to multiply the top by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. Then I have 1 and 3 16 Then I have 3 holes. And lastly, I have 7 16 And then we have that 4 again. So remember, we need to multiply by 4. So 1 times 4 is 4, and 4 times 4 is 16. So I went from 1 and 12 sixteenths to 1 and 9 sixteenths, 1 and 6 sixteenths, 1 and 3 sixteenths, then some gaps, then 7 sixteenths, then 4 sixteenths. So now that we know everything in sixteenths, let's look at step 2. It says write a rule describing the pattern. What operation can be used to describe a pattern that increases? Well, like in our last pattern, if our numbers are getting bigger, then we need to add. But in this case, our numbers are getting smaller. So that means that we need to subtract. Okay, so now that we know that, let's pick two that are next to each other and let's go ahead and subtract. So 7 sixteenths minus four sixteenths gives me three sixteenths. So my rule is that I'm going to subtract three sixteenths. Now that we know that, let's go ahead and fill in those question mark areas. So if I have one and three sixteenths, minus 3 sixteenths, that's going to leave me with just 1. Now, my next one, I have 1 minus 3 sixteenths, which means I'm going to have to rename my 1. So let's go ahead and rename the 1 to 16 sixteenths minus 3 sixteenths. So 16 minus 3 is 13 sixteenths. 
And then 13 minus 3 would be 10 sixteenths. Great job, fifth graders. We figured out what goes in those holes. Good job. Time for the lesson activity. Your job in the lesson activity, which is try this, A, and you can do, go ahead and do it on your paper, is to write a rule for the sequence and then find what goes in that hole. So let's write all of these as a common denominator first, and I'll help you with that. So I have 1 and 1 twelfth. Then I have 6's and 3's. 6 goes into 12 and 3 goes into 12, so let's stick with 12. So my next one is 5, 6. In order to make 6 into 12, I have to multiply by 2. So let me erase this 6 and let's multiply and make it a 12. So we have 5 times 2 is 10 twelfths. Then we have a blank. Then our next one is 1 third. In order to make 3 into 12, we need to multiply by 4. So 1 times 4, because there's a 1 on the top, is 4 twelfths. And lastly, I have 1 twelfth. Now let's subtract and see what's, what's changing. So if you look here, I see that I have 4 twelfths. And now I'm going down to 1 twelfth. So that means that my number is decreasing, so I can go ahead and write that my rule is going to subtract. Okay, 4 twelfths minus 1 twelfth is 3 twelfths. So my rule is that I subtract 3 twelfths. And now you guys can go ahead and fill in this hole, knowing that you have 10 twelfths in front of it, and you're going to subtract 3 twelfths from it in order to figure out what fills in that gap. Great job, fifth graders.